Thank you, Dr. Peterson. Our, our next presenter, uh, Dr. Marty McCary, uh, also bears a few scars from telling the truth during COVID. Uh, Dr. McCary is a surgeon and public policy researcher at Johns Hopkins University. He writes for the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal and is the author of two New York Times bestselling books, Unaccountable and The Price We Pay. He has been an outspoken opponent of broad vaccine mandates and some COVID restrictions at schools. Dr. McCary holds degrees from Bucknell University, Thomas Jefferson University, and Harvard University. Dr. McCary. Thank you, Senator, and uh, thank you, Senator and Mr. Kennedy, for the honor to present here. I'm trained in gastrointestinal surgery. My group at Johns Hopkins does more pancreatic cancer surgery than any hospital in the United States. But at no point in the last 20 years has anyone stopped to ask, why has pancreatic cancer doubled over those 20 years? Who's working on that? Who's looking into it? We are so busy in our healthcare system, billing and coding and paying each other, and every stakeholder has their gigantic lobby in Washington, D.C., and everybody's making a lot of money, except for one stakeholder, the American citizen. They are financing this giant, expensive healthcare system through their paycheck deduction for health insurance and the Medicare excise tax as we go down this path of billing and coding and medicating. And can we be real for a second? We have poisoned our food supply, engineered highly addictive chemicals that we put into our food. We spray it with pesticides that kill pests. What do you think they do to our gut lining and our microbiome? And then they come in sick. The GI tract is reacting. It's not an acute inflammatory storm. It's a low-grade chronic inflammation. And it makes people feel sick. And that inflammation permeates and drives so many of our chronic diseases that we didn't see half a century ago. Who's working on it? Who's looking into this? Who's talking about it? Our healthcare system is playing whack-a-mole on the back end, and we are not talking about the root causes of our chronic disease epidemic. We can't see the forest from the trees sometimes. We're so busy in these short visits, billing and coding. We, we've done a terrible thing to doctors. We've told them, put your head down, focus on billing and coding. We're going to measure you by your throughput, and good job. You did a nice job. We have all these numbers to show for it. Well, the country is getting sicker. We cannot keep going down this path. We have the most over-medicated, sickest population in the world, and no one is talking about the root causes. The Pima Indians are the perfect example. Here is a group where the obesity, diabetes rate was less than 1%. The land in New Mexico and Arizona had its river supply diverted by ranchers and um, settlers, and the land and the soil was destroyed. The government, recognizing this tremendous injustice, started to send free government food, but it wasn't organic kale and fruit and some vegetables, it was processed and junk food. Instantly, the Pima Indians developed an obesity diabetes rate of 90%. And what did the United States government do? What did our healthcare system do? The NIH dispatches its researchers to draw the blood of the Pima Indians to look for a gene that predisposes them to obesity and diabetes. What are our leaders doing? The H in NIH is supposed to stand for health. Where are they spending their money on food as medicine and looking at the estrogen binding properties of pesticides that are driving our fertility rates down? They're funding research in Wuhan, China, and they're funding research on a new food compass to replace the misinformation they put out with the food pyramid telling us Lucky Charms is healthier than steak. Somebody has got to speak up. Maybe we need to talk about school lunch programs, not just putting every kid on, obese, on, on obesity drugs like Ozempic. Maybe we need to talk about treating diabetes with cooking classes, not just throwing insulin at everybody. Maybe we need to talk about environmental exposures that cause cancer, not just the chemo to treat it. We've got to talk about food as medicine and research these areas. 20% of our nation's kids are on medication. And as you heard, half are obese or overweight. Are they more disobedient than children in Japan? Or have we poisoned the food supply? Is this a chronic disease epidemic that has a 
been a direct result of what adults have done to children. We like to blame people for their diseases, but maybe we need to look inward. We see all these shiny objects thrown at us. Politicians talk about, oh, we've got a new healthcare proposal. Medicare can now negotiate the prices of 10 generic drugs. Don't be fooled. These are things in the periphery. It's not to say they don't have merits, but the proposed uh, uh, program savings in year one, by their own description, is $6 billion. In a $4.5 trillion economy that's expanding at 8% per year in the commercial sector, that's a $200 billion expansion. We save $6 billion. The best way to lower drug costs in the United States are to stop taking drugs we don't need. So, Dr. McCary, I've got a couple of questions. First of all, how many years have you been practicing medicine? 22 years. So, we've noticed a shift from, you know, decades ago when 80% of doctors were independent to now 80% are working for some hospital association. Um, first of all, what has that meant in terms of doctors' independence and, and who they are really accountable to? Look, the move towards corporate medicine and mass consolidation that we've witnessed in our lifetime has meant more and more doctors are told to put their heads down, do your job, billing and coding, short visits. We've not given doctors the time, research, or resources to deal with these chronic diseases. Yeah, you know, I used to comment frequently during the COVID pandemic that doctors should be at the tip of the, of the treatment pyramid. They're being crushed at the bottom. What happens to a doctor who puts their patient first and tries to practice outside the guideline, tr tries to do something outside the, the recommended protocol, which is risk-free. Don't get in trouble for doing that. What, what happens if you do step outside that to advocate for your patient? Well, increasingly now we have a misinformation police, although the greatest perpetrator of misinformation has been the United States government with the food pyramid. <laughs> Demonizing saturated fat, telling us that arsenic levels are acceptable at a certain rate when they don't know, putting their head in the sand as we're watching these chronic disease epidemics, spending money on research on mating habits of Japanese quail on cocaine. I mean, these are real government grants. Where's the grant on pesticides and school lunch programs? But, but I'll follow up. I, I had doctors around a similar table, again, back in the COVID-19 Second Opinion panel. And, I mean, they were fired. They were sued. Uh, they had their board certifications rescinded. Uh, how effective is that in terms of how it intimidates other doctors? And, again, I, I, look, I love doctors. They saved my daughter's life. They, they literally are saving her life today. Um, so I, I, I have nothing but reverence for doctors. But I also understand the pressures of working for an organization that you follow this protocol, don't step outside the system. I mean, how effective is that intimidation? Well, it's, it's of seeing a few of your colleagues no longer be able to practice medicine, all, all that training, all, all your dedication, your patience, gone. The purpose of science is to challenge deeply held assumptions. That's how we advance the field and discover things. We're not discovering things right now. And by the way, the NIH, we just did an analysis, one in six grants goes to health equity and disparities research. Well, just describing these differences is not interesting. We've known about them. Reducing the disparities is interesting, and that's what we have to do by talking about our poison food supply. Well, again, thank, thank you for speaking out and telling people the truth. We're, we're going to switch up the order.